consciousness is the thing that flickers to life when you wake up in the morning. I mean, think about how wacky this is. You have the same brain the moment before you wake up and the moment after, but something just changed a little bit about the activity, the way the signals are moving around. And suddenly you're conscious, whereas a moment ago, you were just lying there like a sack of potatoes. You had the same brain, but you weren't aware of anything. But now your brain cells start to run a slightly different algorithm and suddenly you're aware of your existence, of your name, of your history and your bedroom and the smell of coffee and the feel of your sheets and the details of the room around you. Now, weirdly, what you're experiencing is a private experience. It's what we call a subjective experience. It's not objective, which is something we can measure and agree on, a shared reality. Instead, only you are experiencing it. So if there's someone else in the bedroom when you wake up and that person is looking around, there are different things going on in that head, different thoughts, different feelings, a different subjective experience. Okay, so imagine you're there and you roll over and you look at a painting on your wall and you see the colors. Now, what's happening inside your brain is that different wavelengths of light are bouncing off the painting and they're activating particular color photoreceptors in the back of your eyes, which sends signals back to your brain through the optic nerve. And in the brain, cells in the visual cortex start activating. And if you had a magical microscope by which you could view what was happening in the brain, you'd see that you have a vast pattern of cells in the back of the brain that activate when you look at one painting color and a different pattern of cells that activate when you look at a different color. But the question is, why do you perceive the red in the painting as red? There's just a particular wavelength of light associated with your private subjective experience of seeing red, but the redness is something made up by the brain and could just as easily be perceived by you as blue or green or anything else. So why does this particular pattern of cells equal a particular color? These are called qualia. Qualia are the features of our experience, the internal experiences that are associated with conscious states, the redness of red in this case or the sweetness of sugar, or the pain of a headache. These are called qualia. Now, these are irreducible, which means they can't be described in terms of something else. And by the way, they're also ineffable, which means they can't be fully explained or described in words. Like if I ask you, what does an avocado taste like? How are you going to answer that? Let's say that I tell you I've never eaten an avocado and I really want you to tell me what that experience is. It's not something that you can directly transmit to me because it's an experience that's private to you and generally cannot be reduced to words. The last piece of the foundation that we need is that when you look in the brain, it's all just neural signals going on and all those signals look exactly the same. So if I opened up a little window somewhere in the skull and showed you just a little bit of brain tissue and I used that magical microscope so you could see all the spikes zipping around and I said to you, hey, are we looking at the visual cortex here or the auditory or the somatosensory or some other part? You wouldn't be able to tell me. I wouldn't be able to tell you because it's all the same stuff going on in there. It all looks the same. There aren't spikes that equate to consciousness and other spikes that are running around unconsciously. It's all cells and spikes and they all look alike. So why do some patterns of signals mean the color red and others mean the smell of apple pie and others mean the pain of a paper cut? It's all just signals and networks of cells. It's all the same stuff running around. And so this is really the heart of the mystery. The brain is made up of lots of cells, 86 billion neurons and about as many glial cells, but they're just cells. And the brain, as far as we can tell, is just a giant machine that's made out of biological wetware. It's an enormous and quite alien computational device. But every cell in the brain is driven by the activity of other cells. 
And so no matter how complex the whole system is, it appears to be fundamentally a machine in which each sequence of actions is leading to the next sequence. It doesn't appear that there's some extra bit in the brain that's not just about the physical stuff. And so somehow we need to look for consciousness in the physical stuff. And we know that consciousness depends on the details in the brain because even very small damage to your brain can change your consciousness. 